everybody. I saw a couple shows recently, so I figured I'd talk about those. But also, I'm going to give you guys a small update on what's going on with my videos. Um, I've lost the internet at my house for the past five or six days, so that's why I haven't really posted anything. I also have been working too much, so I really haven't been writing anything. But the next review is coming up. It should be up probably if I finish everything sometime next week. Because it's going to involve some extra shots, including a couple ones with a mullet. But... It should be fine. I'll have another It's Just My Opinion up by next week. But for right now, let's talk about the shows that I saw. Let's start off with the most recent one, which was the Scorpion's Farewell Tour. I think it was called The Final Sting or something stupid like that. But um, I've never been a huge Scorpions fan. And I'm not saying that, that I don't like them. I'm saying that I've just never really gone out of my way to get anything from them. Not a best of, not a single album from them. But I have a couple songs on my iPod, and I'm amazed at how many songs from them I actually do realize that I have. And I think it's mostly because uh, I hear a lot of bands cover them, like Children of Bodom covered Don't Stop at the Top, and uh, Sonata Artica covered Still Loving You. So I have those songs because I wanted to hear the originals. But I really don't have a best of from them, and I need to get one after this show because it was really good. First of all, the sound at Jones Beach Theater sucks, and this goes for both of the shows I'm going to talk about tonight. Uh, the sound really comes in with every wave because it's right on the beach. So really, every time like the wave comes in, you hear the so sound spike up and then it goes right back down again. It really sucks. I really hope they build a barricade or something to help prevent that from happening. But um, there was an opening band. It was supposed to be Queensryche, but Queensryche came down with a sudden case of broken the hell up. So they unfortunately couldn't make it. And there was another band that played, and I don't remember who they were called and I don't remember what they sounded like so you know obviously they were great and left a great impression on me musically the scorpions were amazing it was really a great show and I think that they got all the parts together right the guitars didn't sound out of tune or even tuned down because of the time because Klaus obviously can't sing the high notes like he used to but it wasn't really tuned down in a way that was really noticeable. It was very good. And Klaus is a great front man. He has a lot of energy. He's really engaging with the crowd, which was great to see. And he uh, he just he can still hit basically everything he puts out. Um, they showed a lot of pictures of him from earlier because the screens in the back had a lot of like old Scorpions clips and like they had one thing that was great where they went from album to album. Uh, they they did like a little behind the scenes video thing where they went through every album cover and they had like a little mini movie for each one and it was really cool to see and they had a drum solo that went along with it but I'll get to the drummer in a second but Klaus really used to look like Ronnie James Dio and I don't think anybody ever noticed that until like recently but they had pictures up there and I'm like because they were doing a song uh, Raised on Rock and I, I, I kept thinking to myself I was like oh that's cool they're doing a little Dio tribute and then I realized oh that's Klaus that's not Dio at all but Klaus was a great front man. The guitarists were amazing and always on point. There was one point where one of them just left for some reason. Klaus has a tendency to throw the tambourines haphazardly just out. Because in between, they have a lot of solos and Klaus always wants to be engaging. Not like Bruce Dickinson, which I'll get to. Where Bruce Dickinson, whenever they had a solo, would just leave the stage. Klaus wanted to be on stage all the time, which I really like. I like it when the band is all together for everything, not just like, all right, you guys have fun, I'm going to go in the back now. But um, he would just, he would use the tambourine every 10 minutes, and then every time he would go back to sing, he would just throw the tambourine away. I swear to God, I thought he was going to throw each one into the crowd. But uh, eventually, by the end of it, he had one guy stand on the side and just catch him. It was really funny to see. But um, on to the drummer. The drummer is great, and he has a lot of energy. And he even, like, did a section after he did a solo, and he did something that I called a solo through time, where he did, like, parts of drum parts for each album that he had, which I really enjoyed. And um, while he was there, he actually gave, a, gave a, a cheer, a toast to the crowd, and he was like, Cheers to the Scorpions! And I was just like, that's just really cheesy, but I love it. And um, he even has shirts because um, he has a huge tattoo that just says rock and roll forever I think on the back on his back and he has a shirt that has that written on the back and he did a whole thing where he, he turned around and his shirt said that he took off the shirt and it showed his tattoo I thought it was funny I thought the videos for the show were really what got me into it more so than the music I thought it was a really good show that they put on um, the only thing I had a major problem with was the guitar solo the guitar solo wasn't very good um, it's not so much that it 
wasn't fast or it wasn't technical. It's it's that it sounded like he was just flailing. It didn't sound like there was any technique or it was pre-rehearsed or anything like that, which I guess is good, but it just sounded off. It sounded like it was going more for being loud than it was for being good. So the Scorpions was fun as hell, but uh, it pales in comparison to the show I saw a couple weeks ago, which was Iron Maiden and Alice Cooper. Alice Cooper was my first concert, so I was really excited to hear that he was opening for Iron Maiden, and the set that they put up was the No More Mr. Nice Guy set, so they had a whole bunch of trash set up, they had graffiti on the walls, and as soon as I got there, I noticed that they had a guillotine, and I was just like, oh, yes, they're going to do it tonight, because the last time I saw them, he did the gallows, and I wanted to see him do the guillotine instead. Um, it was just a great show from start to finish for, for Alice Cooper. We were up pretty, pretty high for Alice Cooper, but... Um, one thing that has to be mentioned is that his guitarist, and I'm saying this as a good thing, is Orianthe, the pop singer. If you ever hear her play guitar, just as a regular guitar, she has a, a song on YouTube right now, check it out, where she plays a three or four minute solo with Steve Vai. It's called Highly Strong. It's incredible. She's a great guitar player. And she used to be Michael Jackson's bass player. And as soon as I heard that she was going to be Alice Cooper's guitarist, I was really, I crossed my fingers hoping that she would actually be on there for this show, and lo and behold, she was. She was great. She played every part perfectly. They opened with a good song for her, which was uh, Billion Dollar Babies, and Alice Cooper is a great band leader frontman. He doesn't really talk to the crowd too much, and I guess that's just to save his voice, because he's kind of old, but as a band leader, he's a great front man. He commands the band, he does the thing where he holds up his arms and the band stops and keeps going. And I like that. I like front men to really control the rest of the band. I don't like them to just be there to sing and then leave. But we'll get to Bruce Dickinson in a second. Um, Alice Cooper is awesome. I love, I love the show. He played a great variety of new and old stuff. He played Hey Stupid, he played uh, I'm 18, Brutal Planet. They played a lot of really heavy stuff. The only song I probably would have wanted him to play was uh, Vengeance Is Mine. Uh, but I guess that's just because I wanted to hear the guitar solo for that. But all in all, the show was great. The theatrics didn't really kick off until the middle of the show, which uh, I kind of liked. I like to hear the band more than the show for Alice Cooper, actually. Uh, it's like the opposite of Guar. But... The theatrics, when they were on, were good. He brought out a huge Frankenstein guy for Feed My Frankenstein. They they had a whole bunch of sparks going smoke. They had him being chased by the guys, and then while he played I Love the Dead, he, he had his head cut off by the guillotine. It's a great show. I would love to see him as a, uh, a, front, a front liner, a headliner, one of these days uh, really soon, because I feel like I loved it, but I wanted to see more. And that's always a great thing to see in an opening band. If you just want to see them perform a headlining set, that means that you had a great time. So really, Alice Cooper was great. Now on to Iron Maiden. If I had to pick one band that I love the most, it's definitely Maiden. I I love the, the sound that they put out. I love songs from almost every album they have. Matter of Life and Death's not exactly one that I would call good. But uh, my favorite album front to back from any band ever is Brave New World. They are my favorite band, so I'm always happy to see them. I only saw them for the first time last year, and it was just great. Uh, they played mostly new stuff because they were promoting the uh, the new album, uh, Final Frontier. This one was modeled all around Seventh Son of a Seventh Son. The sets were incredible. They had uh, a whole bunch of... Apparently, they've done this forever, and I just never noticed, but they have flags come out for every song. Like, their banner changes for every song they play. But the banners for this one were drawn in a way that looked like they were created in ice. Like, you had the, the Phantom of the Opera um, actual picture with Eddie, like, in front of the, the organ in ice. And you had, like, the trooper, you had the, tr the famous trooper stance in ice, like on the cover of Seventh Son of the Seventh Son. And I loved that. I thought it was a great uh, look to it. I thought that the set was incredible. And they had one prop that was the, basically, the best I can describe, it's a living version of the Seventh Son cover. If you ever get a chance to look at that, that's exactly what it was. The, the womb was moving, the... The head was moving back and forth. It looked psychotic, and it was great. But 
enough about the sets. Let's talk about the actual music. This was a purely fanboy set. They were going for the Made in England set, which I like. It was pretty good. I'm, I'm glad they incorporate a lot of stuff, but they, they really went up to the album Fear of the Dark, and that's it. And I love that. I thought it was a great idea because the last time I saw them, they played mostly new stuff. Like, they even played Blood Brothers. And they they took this set as a chance to, to play their older stuff that they've never played. Like, they played Seventh Son of a Seventh Son in its entirety. It's like a 12-minute song, and they played it entirely. One of my favorite things was they played The Prisoner. It's the first time I think they've played The Prisoner live in a while, if ever. And my favorite thing about it was more people were talking along with the talking part at the beginning of The Prisoner that has the, the clip from the TV show where they go, I'm not a, a number, I am a free man. More people were talking along with that than they were to the intro to Number of the Beast. And that was freaky as hell. The crowd was a pretty good maiden crowd. It was it was a little quiet at some times. It was a little lame. The guys in the front row, I could see, were not really into it. Like, three rows back, you could see everyone sitting down. And I'm just like, you're, front, you're the first three rows in a maiden show. You should be going crazy. But it was it was okay for, for, a, for a Long Island crowd, I guess. But the music itself was great. They played every part perfectly. Uh, I think Phantom of the Opera and The Prisoner were slowed down a little bit, but that's really the, the biggest complaint I would have musically. Um, the sound, this is one of the first Maiden shows, according to my friend who's a huge Maiden fan, that nothing technically, there was no technical difficulties. It all just came through at the end. There were a couple of uh, peaks and a couple of uh, static in the, in the background, but for the most part, it was a great show. Um, I love Bruce Dickinson, I love his energy, but I feel like when it comes to commanding the band, he's really just there to do his part. And his part is incredible, and I'm not knocking that in the slightest. What I'm saying is that he really doesn't have much of a connection to the rest of the band. He's always away from the band. While the rest of the band is trying to rock out together, he's really just away from them doing his own thing. Um... Steve Harris is incredible. Steve Harris was my inspiration to start taking up bass guitar, so it was great to see him play. Uh, parts like to the Clairvoyant they played, and um, like they ended with Running Free, and I love that bass line. But uh, there's one thing. I have written in my notes here one word, and it's just Yannick. Just one word. And Yannick Jeers is, and I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I know I'm not, but Yannick, Yannick is... Their uh, third guitarist, they got they got him during the uh, I, I want to say during the uh, the Virtual X the Virtual Eleven X Factor sessions. Um, I know he was on Brave New World. I really didn't pay much attention to those other two albums, but um, he does a lot of things with his guitar that I don't think really translate. I my friend actually suggested that maybe his guitar isn't really plugged in and he's just there for show. And I honestly wouldn't doubt that, because he's swinging it around and there's no feedback. He's fighting a giant version of Eddie with the guitar, and there's no feedback or notes being played. I got a feeling his guitar wasn't even plugged in at some points. But honestly, altogether, it was a great show. I would recommend this show to absolutely anybody. Um, I I love Iron Maiden. I, I got to say, if you weren't an Iron Maiden fan, this show specifically wouldn't have been too good. This is all really, really nitpicky stuff. This is all stuff where it's like when Maiden fans go to concerts and they go, you know what, I like that, but why don't they ever play this song and this song? Those are the songs they played tonight, they, that night. They played uh, They played Phantom of the Opera. <laughs> they played Clairvoyant. They played Seventh Son of a Seventh Son. They played The Prisoner. It was all a total fanboy set. So casual fans of Maiden probably wouldn't have enjoyed it as much. But if you're a Maiden fan, there was there's really no reason for you to miss this. Please check this show out. I don't want to say that it's... The, I'm going to say right now that it's the best that they can do. And I want to be proven wrong. Because if I'm wrong, then I win. So here's hoping that next year, just as good. So that's all I got for right now. More videos are going to be coming in the next couple weeks. I will be working on growing my beard back. Because I hate how I look without facial hair. So uh, until next time, be sure to check out my other videos, subscribe to the channel, and uh, I'll be going to more shows and doing more of these vlogs. So 
Expect a vlog on Rock of Ages soon, too, because I've heard bad things and I'm looking to vent. So take care, guys. I'll see you next time.